Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like Wizards and Dragons and making games, and welcome back to things that you can do with the new Surface formats in Game Maker. So I'm going to be making a bit of an update to the deferred rendering video that I made uh, a few months ago. Uh, so the new Surface formats that have been added to Game Maker in the February of 2022 update. Uh, they let us do some interesting things, and a lot of those things are going to make our lives when it comes to deferred rendering slightly easier. So right now, uh, the deferred renderer, the geometry pass, is rendering different information about the 3D scene to uh, two different surfaces. And that's going to be the diffuse color information, which is just the the unlit scene, essentially. Uh, the, the view space normals, the view space depth. And you can also render other things, but those are the only three I'm concerned with right now. And uh, right now, we are doing a little bit of a... A little bit of, of math. Uh, particularly when it comes to encoding depth uh, to, a, uh, to a surface. And I've already made a few videos on the new Game Maker surface formats and things that you can, um, the new easier way that you can render depth to a surface. And I would definitely recommend watching those. They're not long. It's not an immensely complicated subject. Uh, but I am going to be updating this deferred rendering system so that it, um, it uses some of the new surface formats. Uh, there's actually going to be two two new things that I'm going to talk about here uh, with regards to the new surface formats. So if I go into, I guess it's going to be the, uh, what is it, the pre-draw event where we are creating the uh, the render targets like the, the geometry buffer. And let me maximize that. So the one that I'm primarily concerned with is going to be depth. Uh, we are not creating the depth surface directly. Instead, I'm going to be using this helper function that I wrote, which is surface validate, which just checks to see if a surface exists. And if it doesn't, it's going to make you a new one. Uh, I'm going to add another, let's make it an optional argument to this um, surface validate function. And I'm going to make that the surface format. And the default value is going to be surface uh, RGBA 8U norm. Uh, and that's just going to be the default game maker surface. And when we, uh, whenever we say surface create with height, um, I'm going to uh, also um, create it with a given surface format. And I'm also going to do a simple check to say if surface uh, get format is not equal to the surface format that we want, uh, then we'll also assume that the surface isn't valid, we'll free it, and then we'll return a new one. And uh, the end result of that is going to be that I can um, I can specify surface underscore r32 float um, as the um, the format for the depth texture. And from here, I don't have to change anything in the draw event. Um, I don't have to. Well, I do have to change something in the geometry buffer. So in the geometry pass, uh, when we are encoding depth to the surface, instead of doing the two depth color shenanigans over here. I am going to uh, get rid of that additional function call. I'm going to simply encode uh, v underscore vs depth dot red um, on the red channel, zero on the green, zero on the blue, and one on the alpha. Uh, the red is going to be the only color that's actually the only value. It's not really a color that's actually written to the surface, but I want to have alpha be one just to avoid any potential weirdness with alpha blending. And that's all I need. Two normal color can stay. You can use additional surface formats to encode normals, but it's really not that much trouble to just use normals as um by encoding them to a color. The math is extremely simple. Uh, it's one line of code. Um, I can get rid of the um, the two depth color function, and I think I can also get rid of the uh, uniform float camera Z far uh, because I don't need that to encode depth as a color anymore. Uh, so that does make that's uh, one thing that makes our uh, our GML side code a little bit easier. I guess I will go back into the uh, the draw event and get rid of that. And secondly, uh, when it comes to the deferred pass, um, over here, when we are sampling from the depth texture, I don't really have to change anything else, but when it comes to getting the actual fragment depth, uh, all, I don't need to untransform it. I don't need to say get depth from color. Uh, all I have to say is let's use the depth color dot red. And uh, the consequence of that is that I can get rid of the get depth from color linear function. Um, I can also get rid of the uh, camera Z far normal in the deferred pass as well. And 
Uh, that means that I can get rid of that one extra uniform set. Um, where are we? Was I like, oh, it's up here. All right, I was scrolled up. I was going to say, was I not doing that? Because that would definitely, like, not work. Anyway, I can get rid of that. And all I have to do now is run the game. And we have a, uh... oh, I don't need to say dot R on this because that's just a float itself. It's not a vector. Okay. So let me run the game. That was awkward. And when I run the game now, we can see that we have everything working as it was before. Uh, you can't really see, uh, I think I've actually commented out the point light so that uh, you can see more of the directional light in this example. I'll, com I'll uncomment the point light in a moment. But um, depth works, we have fog in the distance, so that, that's working correctly. Uh, fog is working correctly, it's fading out at a particular depth. If I were to actually go back into the deferred pass, and if I were to... Uh, let's uncomment the, uh, the directional light this time. Uh, let's uh, comment out the directional light this time and uncomment the point light and that is going to That is going to give us the point light. You can see the point light works as well. Uh, we, we have um, depth in the scene working as intended working as it was before and uh, That is definitely definitely something I would recommend doing if you are encoding depth to a texture in a deferred renderer now um I'll run the game once again, and I will show you exactly what the uh, the depth texture look like, looks like. It's not going to be super interesting, the depth texture. So that was diffuse, normal, and depth is looks just red uh, from our point of view, from what we're encoding. So this isn't really all that useful to us anymore, at least not to look at. It's definitely useful for the calculations that, that the game is doing in the background. So just in case anybody was curious about that, um, let's see. I will commit this. So... Uh, use use R32 float for the depth texture. So that is a, uh, a strong recommendation for me, from me, when it comes to um, deferred rendering and depth. Uh, there is one more thing that is less important, but I still would consider doing anyway, and that is that one of the other surface formats that we've gained access to is surface... RGBA 32 float and instead of storing a single 32-bit floating point value in a um, in a surface for each pixel, RGBA 32 float allows you to store four 32-bit floating point values for each pixel. And what that means is one, a surface created with that format is going to use four times the amount of video memory as a normal surface, which isn't great sometimes, but it also means that you can directly encode the position of a fragment or of other things in a surface using the surface format. And that's something else that is occasionally extremely helpful when it comes to deferred rendering. And to, uh, to take this a step further and to eliminate some further work in the, um, in the deferred pass of the deferred rendering shader, uh, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say surf uh, gbuff, do I want to rename it? Do I want to have to rename that variable everywhere in my code? I don't really want to do that. So um, depth from this point in the video onwards is just actually going to be position. Uh, we can change this to surface RGBA32 float, and that is going to allow us to encode four floating point values in a texture. So uh, once again, we don't have to change anything in the actual draw event itself. In the geometry buffer pass, um, instead of passing the view space depth to the fragment shader as a varying, I'm going to pass the view space position to the fragment shader as a vector three varying. Uh, I'm gonna have to make the relevant changes in the vertex shader, uh, varying vec three v underscore v vs position. And instead of grabbing the uh, the z value of this vector, I'm going to grab the x, y, z value after this transformation into view space. And that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be rendering our, um, our position to the texture. And I can hop over into the deferred pass, and uh, when we're sampling from color depth, instead of saying fragment depth is going to be color depth dot r, uh, we can say fragment depth is going to be color depth dot um dot b because uh, fragment depth in our geometry pass is just going to be the was previously just the uh, the z component of that vector, and in the deferred pass. Uh, when we sample the um, that value from the texture, we want the depth to be the uh, the third component, 
And the fragment position is just going to be call underscore depth dot RGB. Uh, or it's, it's going to be, I guess I'll rename this one. P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. And this is going to allow us to get rid of some more code. So I can now remove get position from VS. Um, and I believe I can also get rid of the uh, FOV scale varying as well. So that's going to be some other uh, additional setup that I no longer need. Um, if I go into the post drawer, I can get rid of FOV scale. Uh, that's going to be it for those values. We no longer have to do the work of untransforming the depth to a position. And what's wrong now? Okay, I, uh, I messed up the value that we're encoding to the color again. That needs to be V underscore VS position. Um, and that's going to be a, a vector three uh, followed by a one on the alpha channel. So let's uh, let's run that again. All right, so we've got the scene we've got the scene looking exactly as it did before. Uh, this allows you to, among other things, in this case, store depth with a greater precision, because nothing is lost when you um, transform the uh, the depth into um, when you encode the depth as a color. Nothing is lost when you un um, encode the depth as a color. Nothing is is lost when you uh, untransform the depth into a view space position. Uh, we're skipping all that and we're um, encoding the view space position directly, which means that um, it's less work for us as the programmer, it's less work for the computer, and uh, I imagine that generally you would find a better result. Uh, there was a bug that, there was a very annoying bug that snuck into this code uh, in the, um, the follow along wizard game um, games that I'm making a few weeks ago when it came to, uh, at some point in that, um, that deferred rendering recipe. And uh, by far the easiest way to make that not a problem anymore was just to encode the view space position directly. So uh, I would at the very least consider doing this. I did say that a um, an RGBA32 float uh, surface will take up more video memory than a regular surface, but um, it won't be it won't be that extreme. Uh, for a 1920 times 1080 um, surface, if you're rendering a 1080p uh, output, um, that is going to be four bytes per pixel, so that's going to be about eight, about eight megabytes of um, of surface memory uh, for a regular game maker surface. And then if you were to um, if you were to instead use a RGB A32 float uh, surface, that's going to be four times bigger than a regular surface. So that's going to be a 30 uh, 33 megabyte surface, which is definitely more, but it's not cripplingly more. It's not. It, it shouldn't lead to any. Um, like, this shouldn't be the tipping point that causes you to run out of video memory on uh, most devices. Maybe on the Raspberry Pi, this could become a bit of a, a bit of a dangerous consideration, but if you're building for desktop, you should be fine. But that's it. I'm going to end this off here. This has been uh, simplifying the, uh, the deferred rendering code in GameMaker using surface formats. I hope you all found this useful. Hope this makes your life easier. Uh, if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository in the video description. Uh, I will have the extra surface formats additions that I made uh, in this video on a separate branch in the original deferred rendering video. The original code is going to be on the main branch and then the, what the changes I made today are going to be on their own branch uh, so that they'll be separated. Anyway, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this and one follow along let's make a game. I mentioned it. Uh, Wizard Game also uses a deferred renderer. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gamer Player, Harold Gidry, Manta Ray, Project 103, Rowdy Coder, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, V Tro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.